Keep this cucumber, Iggy. She likes it. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Dot com. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make an extremely simple recipe. It is Mujadara. Or Mujadara. This is a uh, Middle Eastern dish. Some say it's from Lebanon, some say it's from Saudi Arabia. You know, where could it be from? I'm not going to take a stance on that. But I will tell you that it's delicious. And I've had it many times. And it's kind of like the Middle Eastern version of beans and rice. And it's a very simple starting point. But you can add layers of flavor, condiments. There are many other names for this dish and I only want to tell you one of them because I think it's so great. And I don't actually know if it's legit or not, but I read it in a food blog. One variant of the name is Megadara, <laughs> which sounds so much more badass. Anyways, three ingredients tonight. Rice. This is hard bargain rice, which tells you to refrigerate after opening. And you know what I did? Not that. The second ingredient is lentils. And the third ingredient is just an absolute shitload of onions. Let's begin. So, we actually need to start with the onions. Because caramelizing onions can take a long time. So we'll get a Dutch oven, aka the Dutch oven. And we will start getting this heated up. I'm gonna turn it to the lowest heat. Another step you could do is to have a beverage. Would you care to speculate, viewer, if I had a beverage before we started filming? Just giving you a moment to decide. If you said yes, I mean if you said no, you would be wrong. If you said yes, you would also be wrong because I had two beverages. <laughs> Having a little, uh, you know, little, um, little drink because uh, work's been stressful late. You know, that's a, they say that's Good way to handle that. <laughs> Somebody says that. I don't know if there's any credence to it, but a little bit of vodka and a little bit of seltzer. I asked the, the PGC Discord how to pronounce this, this dish, and they told me to just use my complete lack of ability to understand linguistics and just wing it. And I felt I felt it I felt for a moment the need to defend myself. And I, I was like, I, I was thinking, I was like. But I, I can read, I can read in four different languages. But I can't t speak, like, I can only speak English. I only know one of them. So it stands. I, there's no need to defend myself. <sighs> Tastes good. All right, so that's heating up. Let's get to work on these onions. And you need in excess of two pounds of onions. I actually don't know, this is probably two and a half, two and a half pounds, I would say. All right, then these are from my great COVID-19 onion stash, right? I did not have to buy any of these onions for this recipe because I f***ing had them on, on hand. And did I put a dent in my onion supply? Yes. Do I have more onions? Also yes. All right, so we're gonna just slice onions until the cows come home. I'm gonna get a bowl, which I already know is not gonna be big enough, but we're gonna thinly slice onions. The way that I'll be doing that is chopping both ends off, chopping it in half into two halves of one onion, peeling, and then slicing each of the halves. Now, since this is a pretty, you know, pretty basic recipe, I figured I could entertain you. That's right, I'm putting effort into making this fun for you. But, memeing so hard on the letters of the onions, I'm gonna do one for each of these onions. John already knows all of them, because I, I had to think ahead, but I was not convinced of my ability to improvise six different versions of this. All right, so, no, don't look at that. Our first onion, all the letters of the first onion can be found in the phrase, onto, nor into, or neither. And here I go slicing this onion. I literally took time out of my work day to prepare that list. <laughs> I sat at my desk, <laughs> pin in hand. I did a good job. All right, there's our first onion. Next up, second onion. You can find all the letters of the second onion in the phrase. Old news is old news. All right, our third onion. Our third onions, all the letters of that third onion can be found in the phrase, our naked ice overwhelms negativity. What does that mean? I don't know. Our fourth onion. 
All the letters of our fourth onion can be found in the phrase, Oscar never imbibed oodles of noodles. He never did it. You could take that to the bank. All right, our fifth onion. Here it is. This one's a little f***ing. You can tell it's f***ing because it's got a dent in it. Have I ever told you, the viewer, that I got a dent in my head? I probably never have. I got a dent in my head, in my skull, right, right around here. Yeah, right around here. And it was from when I was uh, a young, a young boy. Now we were traveling, and I was at a hotel, and I walked into some metal stairs. And I don't know how, but I've had a dent in my head ever since. So if you've ever wondered, how did I get the way that I am? That probably has nothing to do with it. Anyways. You can find all the letters for the fifth onion. The fifth onion. In the phrase, Oh, nefarious itch on the nose. I don't know, it was spicy and chop it a different way. Exciting stuff. Our final onion. Being a much larger onion, we'll call it the Paul Bunyan that is our sixth onion. I have one last, all the letters of the onion. All the letters of the sixth onion can be found in the phrase onionize me captain and that is your entertainment for this episode everything else from here will be boring educational and entirely serious and like i predicted my onion bowl doth overflow will the sixth onion provide a depth of flavor it will the sixth onion will provide a depth of flavor since it is a white onion and the other onions are a sweet onion, therefore diversifying the flavors of our onion. What in the f am I doing? I don't know, but we're gonna, we're adding some different cuts too. So it'll be texturally interesting. Something everyone should strive to be texturally interesting. Look at that, I'm chopping it like a madman. Look at all these weird onion bits. All right, okay, the hard work is behind us. The easy work is in front of us. So we'll get some olive oil in the pan. And you can let it heat up, but you don't gotta. You don't gotta do nothing. Listen, kids, in this life, you don't gotta do anything. There's no kids watching this show, never mind. Don't. That's not for you, kids. That's not for you. All right, there's some onions. Here's some more. Now you may ask yourself, how did we get here? Why is this? Who have you done and where have you been? But it, look, it's gonna cook down. And now every time, oh, every time you caramelize onions, I find this to be the case. Every time that you, you, the viewer, caramelize onions, and me, the Phil, who is apparently going through puberty again, because my voice just cracked. Every time I caramelize onions, I'm like, I should have made three times as much as that. Every time, every time, I am amazed at the reduction in volume. And I'm like, I just spent an hour with it. And there's not that many of them. This time, there's gonna be enough onions. So the key with caramelizing onions is to cook them slowly. And you can see because there's just so many fucking onions here, we might actually need to start it off at a little bit of an elevated temperature, like a true medium. But you know, they'll cook down. And we'll, we'll fuck around with these onions forever. And we're literally not gonna do anything else because we just gotta cook these onions. So we'll be back. Okay, so we're gonna make condiment. And this is from a different part the Middle Eastern area. So where is Mujadar from? Hmm, could be Lebanon. That's kind of the north of the Middle East. But this condiment is from Yemen. It's Yemenese. And it's called Zug, or Zug, or Shug, or something like that. And really what it is, is it's like a uh, cilantro pesto, but it's spicy. And we'll be using uh, jalapenos today because of, uh, the, probably a more authentic would be to use like a green bird's eye or like, I'm, I'm totally ignorant to what green Middle Eastern peppers are called, but that's a thing, right? It's just like green peppers. Anyways, this would be best made in a mortar and pestle. You should be like bashing it, hand grinding it. That's what all the food bloggers say, but I'm not a food blogger and you're not a food blogger. And you don't have that big hand grinding thing, neither do I. So we're gonna, we're gonna blend it. Which is gonna be less good, but it's fine. All right, so here's some cilantro. I got three bunches of cilantro, because I just buy it every time I go to the store. So here's our cilantro. We'll wash it in the crick that is my sink. And basically we're gonna use just the leafy parts. You can sort of add stems if you want, but it's, 
It's up to you. The more stems you have, the less texturally pleasing this will be. And you can give it a cursory chop. You could probably skip this step, but just go ahead and put that in your blending container, like so. And you could also add parsley to this. I don't know why. I don't even think that parsley is actually traditional on this. I think it's just like, again, I, it feels like a food vlogger thing to me where they're like, well, not everyone likes cilantro, so maybe I'll put in some uh, you know, parsley. I like parsley, but it's kind of dumb, so parsley today. Now here's uh, a very large jalapeno, and that might actually be enough and although I don't, I, I feel like a mixed feelings about doing this. Because this is kind of like a, a pesto type deal, I am gonna advocate that you remove the seeds. While I like the seeds personally, I don't think that they're gonna blend up nicely. So I think you'll have a nicer paste if you omit it like so. All right, here I've got three cloves of garlic. And I'm really hoping, <laughs> I'm really hoping that my little hand blender will be able to work its way through all these. Cause I'm just being real lazy and crush the garlic makes it easier to peel. Here I am over here working the onions. Just gotta give them a stir now and then. Once these get going, they'll be, they'll be going. All right. Uh, we got some spices, a little cumin. Cumin goes good in everything. A little cardamom powder, that'll make, give you a little bit more of a Middle Eastern flair. Could use fresh spices if you want. Here, and here's coriander powder. That's it, nothing else. Lemon juice, you can do this at the end, you can do this at the beginning. I don't know, I've never made this before, so I'm just making it up as I go. I'll just use a, one lemon, sounds nice to me, right? Does that sound nice to me? Here's some pepper, and some salt, and last but certainly not least, some olive oil. So, the end product should be a big old paste. Should be nice, nice and pasty, just like you. All right, let's see if this works. I don't know. We're just gonna do our best. Worst case, I'll throw it into an actual blender. Yeah, so far so good. This is working surprisingly well. All right, let's see what we got. What are we working with here? All right. Yeah, I think that looks good. There's no big chunks. Let's see how it tastes. That's really good. Oh man. Oh man, I like that. Hell yeah, that's good stuff. All right, and if you want it to look ass aesthetically pleasing in addition to be texturally pleasing pour it into a jar and if you want this to keep for uh, a while you can put a layer of olive oil on top but we're just going to use it tonight so no need to worry about that so was that an authentic recipe mm, i don't think so was that what they call sugar sugar whatever that mm, i don't know but is that delicious <laughs> yeah i could put that on a taco and it would be enlightened all right, that's it for now. We will be back. All right, time for our rice and lentils. Here I have a pot and some rice. And I believe that the normal ratio is height and height. And I wanna make a lot of this because I wanna eat a lot of this. And this is a great meal prep food, so we're gonna make two cups of each. And if you got any sense of volumes, you'll realize that's a shitload. You wanna make less? Make less. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're gonna cook them together, you might need to let the lentils cook longer. And I meant to, I meant to cook the lentils first. But, recognizing what this show is, let's just cook them together. I feel like it'll be fine, cause like, it, cause it will. It'll be fine. We'll give those a mix. You know, I uh, am a maverick. Hero to somebody. All right, that's four cups of water. Let's give it another three cups of water. I don't know, it's for some, or two and a half, I don't know. Something like that. Eh, eh. Make it so that there's some water above this. I'm sure it'll be fine. And put that on to the oven. And we'll get a lid for that. I think this pot is bent, so I will use this lid that is bigger than it. But not to worry, I know what I'm doing. I've cooked before. So we will be back when there's something to talk about. Other than the virus. So we've been caramelizing these onions. It's been like an hour. And they're starting to, be, there's some like fond filling up, building up, which I've been scraping. Which is really nice with this Dutch oven. You can just scrape that off with no problem. I am gonna add a little bit more oil. Just to keep the, uh, the process going. Excuse me. And we'll mix that on up. But we're nearing the, uh, the home stretch. You can see, you see how many onions we started with now? Almost no onions. Keep on caramelizing, don't give up. Keep fighting that good fight. That looks weird. 
It's been 90 minutes since we've been caramelizing these onions. And what you can see, there's almost no onions left, right? All that work for nothing, but there they are. There's lots of fond on the pot. I can't even scrape it anymore. And we're starting to get some crispy bits. Now, if you would like to get this to be like restaurant quality for this dish, you can subsequently deep fry these caramelized onions. And so that'll create a super uh, crispy exterior. I cannot do that. I cannot do that morally or ethically, or I, can, I just can't wait that long. So we're gonna leave it as is. Also, our rice and lentils are done. They've been done for a long time, actually. But you can see they cook just fine. It's nice and fluffy. So let me show you how you make this dish. And by the way, this just this rice and lentils together tastes great. It tastes really good. So a couple scoops. The rice and lentils, spread it out a little bit, and then you put onions on it. And yes, you really do put that many onions on it. So from a caramelized standpoint, that's probably two onions, two full onions on your food. And at its base, that's all it is. Rice, lentils, onions. Couldn't be simpler. All right, so I'm gonna try the most simplified version, which is, again, lentils, onions, and rice. And it's really delicious. Caramelized onions have such a wonderfully strong flavor. And there's actually a little zip to these, these lentils. I don't know why. I don't know what happened to them. But anyways, let me show you how you round out this meal. Traditionally, you would serve some yogurt with it. So we'll do that. We'll get a little bit of yogurt. This is just plain whole milk yogurt. I do have Greek yogurt too, but I'm trying to use this first. So use some yogurt. Some people will just throw this right on top as well. And then we will also have our side salad, which we made when you weren't looking. But this is lettuce from the garden, mint, parsley, also from the garden, tomato, onion, and cucumber, and it's dressed in olive oil, lemon juice, and sumac, and some salt and pepper, of course. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. Now, if you remember, we made this sug, and I think this is gonna really pump up the party, as it were, for our lentil dish. So we'll just spread some of that right over the top. If you put this in a squirt bottle, you could do a zigzag, that might be nice. And that'll really add a depth of flavor. You could also top this with fresh herbs, so mint, cilantro, parsley, green onion, all of those things would be nice. And you could also, have some pita. What meal's complete without bread? What could you possibly want more than some bread with your carbs? And now, now it feels like a real meal. Other options. You could add a meat right on top of this. Lamb would be excellent. We almost cook lamb, but we don't eat it. You could put the whole salad on top of this as well and it would taste quite nice. But yeah, here's our meal. Looks like a bunch of healthy stuff to me. Not an expert, but I think that's probably pretty healthy. Let's try a taste. Let's try a bite with this nice sauce that we threw on there. That'll be fun. Mmm. That sauce is the boss. That's not authentic at all to do that, but it just tastes so good. Well, hope you enjoyed the different layers of this particular recipe. I've been drinking through the whole episode, and I gotta eat this right now. And therefore, it's time to say goodnight from me. That's how you do it. God bless you and your family. You could probably afford to eat less meat. Make a vegetable meal. Okay, bye. <laughs>